Have you ever wondered why do we need data alignment? One of the more important applications is faster data access of single instruction, multiple data instructions of modern processors. In this video, you will learn how to align data properly for optimal finite impulse response filtering of audio signals. Hi everyone, my name is Jan Wilczek from dwoolsound.com and if you're new to this channel, I teach you how to process sound using self-written software. In the previous videos we discussed what are single instruction multiple data instructions SIMD, and how can we use them to perform finite impulse response FIR filtering in the time domain efficiently. We discussed various techniques called collectively loop vectorization, which utilize so-called short vectors, so parts of the input signal and the filter's impulse response to perform faster the operation of inner product. To transport parts of these vectors from memory to the dedicated SIMD registers and back, we need to use special functions. These functions are called load store instructions. Once the data is in the SIMD registers, we can do the actual computations on it. And these load store instructions are exactly the functions that work most efficiently when they operate on aligned data. But what does it mean, aligned data? Well, a datum is said to be aligned to a specific boundary expressed in bytes if its address is divisible by this boundary. So for a datum to be aligned to a 32-byte boundary, its address must be a multiplicity of 32. For example, in C++, a float variable has 32 bits, so 4 bytes, at least on my computer, and so its default alignment is 4. It means that the processor can only allocate memory for a float at an address divisible by 4. If you're interested in learning more about alignment, I have a whole video on this topic, which I have linked to in the description below. Okay, we know what data alignment means and that the load store SIMD instructions are in theory faster when they can operate on aligned data. In fact, typically SIMD instruction sets have separate functions for handling aligned and unaligned data. So how can we make sure that the data we operate on in our FIR filtering code is aligned? Well, the answer is not straightforward because it depends on the vectorization method that we discussed before. Let's then focus on the fastest and the most difficult method of them all, outer inner loop vectorization. In outer inner loop vectorization, we compute a vector of outputs in each outer loop iteration. The outer loop for the first output sample is shown in this figure. Each frame signifies one inner product between the short vectors. Each frame type signifies the inner products performed in one inner loop iteration. Finally, each frame, so each inner product, requires two loads from memory to the dedicated SIMD registers. When we look at this figure, it's hard to imagine that each load could be aligned. How can we achieve alignment when elements of X are being read one by one? In such sequential access, one aligned load must mean three unaligned ones that follow it. To give you a minute to think about it, allow me for a small interlude. If you're interested in the topic of audio programming using C++ and Python for digital audio effects programming, digital signal processing and sound synthesis, I wholeheartedly recommend you subscribing to this channel. Although it's a niche topic, we already have over 1300 subscribers and we're growing fast. Thank you. Your voice really makes a difference. Back to our alignment problem. What if we could access a different array in which the needed element is aligned? Let's look at this figure. By simply copying and shifting the reverse filter coefficients, we manage to achieve alignment on every load. 
the number of copies is equal to the length of the short vector which depends on the SIMD instruction set used. For example, processors with the AVX instruction set can fit 8 floats into one SIMD register. That means that we would need to make 8 copies of the reversed filter coefficients. One caveat here is that we need to know one of the convoluted signals before any filtering takes place. Here we assume that we know the FIR filter coefficients, which is a reasonable assumption when we talk about digital audio workstation plugins or video games audio. At the end of one outer loop iteration, of course, we need to store the vector of outputs from a SIMD registers to memory. But it is easy because we just need an aligned memory block of a size known at compile time. It is the alignment of dynamically allocated memory that is difficult to achieve. And in order to make copies of the reverse filter coefficients, we need to allocate memory. We rarely know how many filter coefficients there are at compile time. For example, what if we wanted to load the impulse response from a file? Therefore, we need a way to allocate dynamic arrays which have a specific alignment. There are a few ways to achieve this in C++. For example, you can write your own allocators for the standard containers like std vectors. You can try to use the new operator with an alignment requirement or std aligned alloc. However, these features are not available for C++ standards older than C++17 nor in the Microsoft C++ compiler. Therefore, here I will present the way that I found the most versatile, which works for C++11 and newer. First thing we need to do is we need to define how many floats there are in one short vector. And this is dependent on the SIMD instruction set used. In my example, it will be the AVX instruction set in which there are eight floats in one SIMD register. Now we need to create a kind of a dummy structure which has the desired alignment. In our case, we want to have an alignment of eight floats. If you're unsure about this, you can always throw in a static assert that this structure actually has the size of eight floats. Okay, and now we need to define the length of our signal and this length must be a multiplicity of the alignment of this structure and that is because the memory which is allocated that must be aligned must always be a multiplicity of the alignment. In uh, our case we'll define how many short vectors we want this may be based on the actual length of the signal and then we'll calculate the signal length that we'll use later on. Now we may allocate our memory and we will do it using the unique pointer so that we don't need to care about freeing this memory later on. So as you can see we allocated a dynamic memory and because this memory is of the type that it declared before which has the desired alignment this memory is aligned as well. Now, if we want to use this memory as a signal consisting of floats, we need to do one more step. So what we do here is that we do a reinterpretation of this pointer and we now interpret it as an array of floats. Thanks to this, we can use the usual pointer semantics. For example, this kind of assignment. So, as you can see, we allocated a memory block with the desired alignment by using a struct that has this alignment declared. And then we just cast this block of memory to the array of floats. And thanks to the usage of the unique pointer, this memory will be automatically freed when signal container here goes out of scope. And that is how you can align data with any data alignment you want. And in this case, you can use it to perform 
efficient FIR filtering. Finally, being able to have aligned data, we can write an FIR filter which uses the outer inner loop vectorization and the aligned load store instructions. In essence, we can take our outer inner loop vectorization code and replace all the unaligned loads and stores with their aligned equivalents. Just remember to have both of the input signals aligned properly. If you're interested in such an implementation, I have presented one in the full article on dwolfsound.com, which you can find in the description below. It contains also a broader discussion of the aligned allocation methods. One final remark that I always repeat after Bjarne Strusru. Always measure when you discuss performance. I've run a benchmark. A filtering function was executed 10,000 times on vectors of length 2300 and 4600, and I measured the mean execution time. The outer inner loop vectorization technique proved itself the fastest. Its version, operating on aligned data, however, was a little bit slower in most trials. Why? I don't know. <laughs> Please, feel free to check out my implementation and if you know, let me know in the comments below. In summary, in this video, you learned how you can speed up FIR filtering with SIMD instructions beyond loop vectorization by using proper data alignment. You learned what is data alignment and how to align signal data for outer inner loop vectorization. Specifically, you learned how to arrange the reversed filter coefficients and how to allocate aligned data. If you found this video useful, please consider supporting this channel by buying me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Jan Wilczek. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications not to miss out on the next video. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one. Take care.